Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Women Who Rock With Success, which is an award-winning show for professional women. We profile a collective of amazing women who are thriving to build their brand. Women are handpicked in various fields who can provide credible information to build your business and lifestyle. We are live each Thursday at 9 a.m. Central Time, followed by our latest brand, Women Who Rock Investigates. To learn more about us, go to our website at www.womenwhorockwithsuccess.com. Now, let's join our podcast host in the studio, Mrs. Diane Winbush. And good morning, everyone, and welcome to Women Who Rock With Success. We thank you so much for tuning in with us um, on this Thursday morning. And we're so delighted to have you um, as our audience on today. So today we're going to be talking about business, of course, as we always talk about. And so today uh, we'll be also discussing a little bit about uh, branding. So uh, today in the studio we have um, guest, Ms. Nefertiria, um, and she's going to be sharing with us. Um, this morning, a little bit about our business and brand, but we want to get some information from her first, and so she can be able to share with you a little bit about how um, she has um, catapulted in the areas of sales. Um, so good morning, and welcome to the show, Nefertiria. Good morning. How are you? I am doing great, doing great. So wonderful that you are our guest today, and we thank you for being here. So we're going to um, get into the show. We want you to be able to share with the listeners just a little bit about you um, and what compels you to um, get into sales, into marketing. Okay, sure. So I am, as you said, Nefertaria Fonde and also Robinson, and I'm a certified business and sales coach for Christian women who are building a service-based business alongside their corporate job. I call those individuals parallelpreneurs, and they normally um, have the desire to turn their side business into a thriving income, and they want to do so by getting clear on who it is that they serve and how they serve them, getting confident in their sales skills, and so then that can bring in the cash into their business so they can eventually leave their corporate job. So I work with them through private coaching. Um, I also do speaking for group and organizations, and also I'm the author of a book called How to Act. Act is an acronym for Activate Faith, Commit to a Plan, and Take Action That Will Change Your Life. And how I got into sales is because a lot of times people go into following their dreams of, you know, building a business because of some Mm -hmm. deep desire to help people in some form or fashion. And when you have that um, pull to help people, sometimes you forget that you're actually running a business. And in order to run a business, you have to make money. And in order to make money, you have right. to sell the solution <laughs> that you found. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's when we, you know, forget that part. It's like, oh, my God, I, you know, mm-hmm. I have a strong pull or strong passion, but this is my purpose, and I really want to help right. these individuals. But if you're really running a business, you have to make money. You know, all the other businesses that we okay. know, we won't call those numbers because we don't have any endorsements. But, you know, they want to provide you a good service or a good product, but they're charging you for that as well. (laughs) Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because when it, when, you know, When 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 we're when we're in sales, marketing, and what have you, you know, pricing is everything. And of course, uh, you know, you, you know, sometimes you can when you first start out in business, you some things can be freebies. You know, you have different individuals, entrepreneurs. They have their on their website freebies and what have you. But you know, you'll never be able to 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 put the bacon on the table if everything is free. And so um, and that's the reason why it's very very imperative that individuals be able to connect with sale agents. We have, you know, brand strategists on the show and what have you. And it's 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 very important to have a coach. It's very, very important because a lot of times we can, you know, be in the wrong system, in the wrong era, and we can be in the wrong mm-hmm. area. And so it is very, very important that individuals have someone that is a professional or an expert in that field to be able to help them to uh, thrive as a mentor or as a hired uh, professional. So that's wonderful. So it wasn't about the dollars that you uh, kind of uh, 
would like, uh, you know, as a child, because a lot of times the guests, they'll start off from even a little child and stuff. Oh, um, I I, I think uh, one of our guests last week, she's a celebrity hairstylist, and I think what happened was in order for her to get to where she is today is that she started working on her mother's hair and face with makeup and what have you, and that's how she got started. And I'm like, wow, just a small little, you know, nuggets to be able Mm -hmm. to help – you know, to be able to start something, you know, in order to to um, expand it later on. So that's wonderful. So we're going to get into your book um, in a little bit, but right now we want to be able to um, um, share with the audience a little bit about sales. So sometimes individuals, when they see or hear about sales marketing, sometimes the first thing they think about is uh, something on the computer or the Internet. So share a little bit about that as to what it is in sales. What does that determine an a individual? in their business? So sales can come in different forms, right? Just like you say, you can sell online or you can sell offline. So when I say you can sell offline, mm-hmm. you could be in that event and you can be you could be at a networking event and you share with someone what it is that you do and they're like, you know what, I have the perfect person or that's what I've been looking for. And then you have mm-hmm. potentially have what I call a sales conversation or discovery session with that individual and you can sell that way. You can also sell, like I said, online, where you put out a post, or you you put out a post where you're offering some offering some value, and if they want to learn more or know more, they can purchase possibly a digital product, or they can attend your course or class, you know, or they could get some potential one-on-one or group coaching from you as well. So there's you okay. know different ways to gain sales. You can gain it offline, or you can gain it online. But the biggest thing is making sure that when you come into contact with leads is that you have a way to qualify them and get them down to where you can have an opportunity to offer them what it is that you have to offer, if it makes sense. Okay, it does. It does. It's very, it makes a whole lot of sense. So how can women, you know, okay, so we have Corporate America Women. That's where we mm-hmm. are on today on the show. And then we have Professional Women. That's here today on the show. And, of course, we're going to share this segment also with our Christian women. This is a very, very difficult stigmatism for Christian women to be able to, um, you know, it's a procrastination for them. So I wanted you, you to also share as to how Christian women can be able to come out of the stigmatization, the prospect, the you know, the procrastination of being where they are, you know, because people feel that when you know when we're Christians, that's you know we don't want God don't want us to have a business. He don't want us to have you know that's not it's a you know separation between this and that. So what would you say today for a Christian woman that is trying to um, start a business or is interested in products such as sale marketing? Okay, so when I look into the Christian woman that is having a desire or a pull or feel they've been led by God to start a business, trust what you've heard. Despite what anyone else is saying or despite what, you know, you may be reading somewhere else, if you feel like God has led you to start said business, then you need to be mm-hmm. obedient to that calling. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we can't be a blessing if we don't have a bank account with some funds in it. The only way we can really have impact or change <laughs> is, you know, if mm-hmm. our ministry is a business, is to make money. How do you, you know, be able mm-hmm. to put your chosen candidates in the right seats if you can't buy the fundraiser place or you can't get a seat at the table because right. you don't have the funds? So if right. business is the way that God has chosen for you to make impact, then I think you should trust that's what he told you to do and move forward in that direction. And mm-hmm. as far as sometimes we struggle with the selling part of it because we've had some negative experience with selling, um, you know, where oh, somebody right. was very pushy, aggressive, and they just made us feel, you know, we had buyer's remorse because they sold us something that really wasn't what it, what it was, what they said it was or something like that. So we don't ever want to be that mm-hmm. person or ever make you feel that way. And the way that we can do that is reframe how we think about selling. So I like to tell Christian women or anyone else that's, you know, struggling with sales, reframe it as selling is helping. Selling is helping. And we all, especially women, we love to help. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So just think about the times you anywhere, you get anywhere, a grocery store, on the plane or whatever, right. and somebody says, oh, mm-hmm. I got a headache. We're the first one digging in our purse, digging in our bag, trying to get them something to relieve them of their pain. We don't even right. think about it. We don't feel like, oh, mm-hmm. we're imposing. 
you know, they don't really need nothing. They ain't asked us for anything. And I want you to think the same thing about your service or your product. You're offering them to relieve them of their pain that your product or service is the solution to. And that's it. And they have the option. No different in my scenario with somebody said they had a headache, you go get in your purse to give them something to relieve them of the pain. They have the option to take it or say no. But you're not, you disconnect from that, that response. You don't take it personal. They say, you know what? No, I don't really like taking medicine, or I don't like this kind. Or, or if they say, yeah, you know, you don't take it personal. You're like, okay, I tried to help. They weren't interested, and you move on, right? That's the same way mm-hmm. we have to be about selling. <laughs> same way we got to be about selling. Number one, think Absolutely. about it as selling is healthy, and if you have a product or service that can relieve somebody of their pain, it is your obligation to offer your solution for fee. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I, I most definitely agree. You know, you do have to have a bank account. I, you know, I, I uh, tell some individuals, family members, personal family members, that uh, bank accounts mm-hmm. can be able to help you to be able to, uh, um, you know, increase your credit and what have you. And it's very, very mm-hmm. important to have a bank account so you can be able to, um, you know, um, save cash, and then if there is something that you perhaps maybe need later on, you can be able to go to the bank and cash it out. So it's very, very important. So now one of your uh, one of your phrases are parallelpreneur. So explain to the audience a little bit about that and what that means in your terms. So a parallelpreneur is a Christian woman who's building a service-based business alongside their corporate job. That's what a parallelpreneur means to me when I utilize it, you know, in my marketing. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. And so uh, another uh, uh, phrase that you use is clarity to cash. So define that with us, what that uh, exemplifies. Okay, absolutely. So clarity to cash means that when you have clarity in areas of your business as in your person, who it is that you serve, pricing and packaging. How are you serving them? What's the service that you're offering and what price group are you offering that service at? Clarity around your lead strategy. How are you bringing leads into your business? That's the clarity part. Clarity, once you bring those leads, how are you going to close them? How are you, what are you, how are you closing those leads so that you can get that cash? So clarity to cash is basically the instrument that you're clear, clear on the things that can bring cash into your business. Okay. Okay, great. So share with us a little bit about uh, the services that you offer. What is it that you offer not just to Christian women but to corporate America women, other women that are perhaps maybe trying to get their portfolio uh, arranged and modified? Um, what are some of the services that you offer as a salesperson? So basically the services I should pretty much work with individuals who are building a business and never and in their corporate job they never really had to do sales. So they're really new to sales, so they're really needed to learn foundation, simple ways that they can sell it. That's why I make it simple by saying selling is helping. The thing about you offering that pill to the person that said they had a headache, right? Also making okay. sure that they can answer the question what do they do? Right? Because if you are building your business, mm-hmm. a lot of times you like to lead with what it is that you do in corporate world. I'm the director of, I'm project manager of such and such, I'm the head of such and such, department head, blah, blah, blah. But when you're building your business, you need to start advertising that. So making sure that they can answer the question, what do they do when it comes to their business? Because that's also a way that they can sell it because they never know who hears that, if they need what they're having to offer or if they know someone that needs what they have to offer. Okay, okay, that's fair enough. Okay, so we're going to uh, 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 talk about your book a little bit and the reason why uh, um, you chose the topic that you chose, and we want you to uh, share also, first of all, the, the title of your book um, and then the, the reason why you chose that topic, and then we want you to be able to discuss some of the takeaways that you expect the readers to be able to ascertain from your book. Okay, you have to take me one question at a time. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. So the first topic, the first question is the topic of your book. Okay, so the title and topic of the book is the title of the book is How to Act, and act is an acronym for okay. activate faith, commit to a plan, take action that will change your life. And then inside the book, okay. it 
is eight feet at principle, and we deal with entrepreneurship, we deal with finances, and just the freedom that having your finances or an entrepreneurship can give you. It's kind of what we deal with in the book. So in the book, the chapters are very simple and easy to read. It gives you an opportunity mm-hmm. to take some action steps, to do some praying, and also journaling inside of the book. So you don't necessarily start at Act 1. You can start anywhere in the book and get a nugget mm-hmm to, you know, motivate you, inspire you for the moment, and to keep you going mm-hmm. with whatever you may be experiencing. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, great. So how has this been rewarding for you as an author and also being able to help others in this area, whether, you know, no matter what, uh, I guess, category of of, uh, of gender um, that you serve and support, how has this been rewarding for you? So definitely it was a big feat to write a book. Um, I was extremely excited and proud of it, um, being able to do that. And it was also a way, because I sell services, and they're not as tangible as a physical product. And so I really wanted an opportunity to give somebody or be able to have something where somebody could purchase that. It was a physical thing that was at a lower price point that can give them just a little bit more insight of how I do things, how I think, what's my personality like so that they can just get to know me a little bit better, but at the same time gain some great knowledge and nuggets to keep them moving forward and keep them acting. Okay. Okay, great. So here's a scenario that I'm going to – it's a challenge question, so it's a little scenario that I wanted to share and to see how you could be able to um, help uh, the listeners to be able to understand more about money and cash. So, of course, you know that we have Bitcoin um, that um, is growing within the United States and not just the United States, in the world, um, you know, globally. And so how does Bitcoin um, come versus what you offer as to, is that something that you would uh, get into as to offering Christian women or corporate America women or basically entrepreneurs as an investment? So for me, I don't know. I don't have any knowledge of Bitcoin, so I stay in my lane. Okay. So that is not something okay. I would necessarily recommend. <laughs> For me, when I work okay. with individuals and they're like, okay, if I'm ready to invest, then I normally refer them to my personal financial planner or, you know, or some other financial planners that I know that may be a better fit if they're not comfortable with the financial planner that I personally use. But that's what I I, okay. I refer to the expert. I stay in my lane. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's great. That's fine. So how do you help prepare individuals? People are sometimes, especially here, and the, the you know in America people are kind of a little bit um, all over the place when it comes to saving, when it comes to um, uh, trust in CPAs, when it comes to um, investing, when it comes to ROIs. What are some of the steps? A couple of steps that you would take uh, a new entrepreneur in when it comes to investing. What are some of the steps that you would give them so they can be able to feel comfortable? and uh, what it is that you have to offer. So, so how, do I, how I would make them feel comfortable in investing in my service or investing in? It, it, correct. In your, in, in, well, not, well it's, it's in both because, like I stated, you know, when it comes to cash, and, of course, Bitcoin mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, kind of rising in the, the United States and globally. So if you is trying to hook, H O O K, a a customer to be able to feel comfortable in saving and investing or what have you. What are some of the steps that you would take in order for that individual to be able to feel at ease coming to what it is that you have to offer? Okay, gotcha, because it gotcha. can be cha- so, it can be challenging. It can be challenging for anybody, and that's the reason why we try to ask these questions, on you know, with our guests mm-hmm. and things, so the listeners can be able to get a full scope 
as to what it is that uh, that you present, uh, you know, to the public so they can be comfortable so they won't say, oh, well, you know, she's just out, she's trying to, or he's trying to do this or what have you, because we have men on the show as well that are, are, are salesmen and they're marketers too. And so we try to make sure that we get all of the questions and the meat and potatoes out so that the individuals can be able to follow you all after the show so they can be able to feel comfortable in engaging with your product. So that's the purpose of the question. Gotcha. Okay, so I'm going to take it a little bit at a time. So first of all, when it comes to saving point blank period, is that in okay. order to be able to save, you need to, the easiest way I would say for most people to save is to automatically have it withdrawn and put to account that you don't touch or don't have a debit card to. I don't care if it's $5. So go ahead and start saving. Don't wait. Go ahead and start saving. If you say, well, I don't have anything at the end mm-hmm. of the month to save, then my next quick step would be, okay, then let's work towards getting rid of one of your debts. Let's work towards that. Whatever is the smallest debt that you have, say you have a $100 bill for whatever. Okay, let's work towards mm-hmm. getting that paid off until you're only, been paying, you're only paying $25 towards that. Well, once you pay those four payments of $25, keeping the minute easy, right? <laughs> when you pay that, then you take that okay. same $25 that you were paying towards that bill, now you start saving that $25 or saving half of that $25. Maybe you save 15 and put $10 towards the next bill that you need to start get, start to eliminate as far as the debt, right? So that's what I would okay. say about saving. Mm-hmm. Number one, saving, go ahead and start now. If you're like, Neff, I'm tapped out, I can't save right now, then there's a couple things you can do. You can get an additional job so that you can have additional money to save. Two, you can work towards getting off that smallest debt that you have and take the payment that you were putting on that debt and either take the full payment or half of that payment and put it into a savings account that you don't have access to via like a debit card, that you really would have to physically go to bank. Make it hard for yourself to access that money because you want to build up your savings, mm-hmm. right? right? Okay, number mm-hmm. two, you going to ask me a question? No, go ahead. No, no, I was, I was just agreeing oh. with you. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. And so, three, as far as trusting someone that you're going to invest in, whether you're investing in purchasing somebody's service or product or you're investing in someone to help you build wealth with the money that you have, in order for you to trust them, I think you need to spend some time getting to know them. So you need to maybe mm-hmm. get on their email list. Follow them, come to some of their events, um, get on it. If they have a a consultation or discovery call that's complimentary, get on that discovery call. But be prepared for that discovery call. Have your questions, do some research, you know, and then and see, and then feel, and then go with whoever you feel most comfortable and who you feel that you could trust. Like that, that really get who you are before you invest. So the thing, like I said, whether you're investing in a service or product that somebody's selling you or you're going to invest in your money. You know, when I decided to invest with a financial planner, I had met several, because I do a lot of networking, and I had met several financial planners, and I chose the one that I chose because of when I had a conversation with her, she made me feel, I felt like she was knowledgeable, she answered all my questions, she was very patient, she didn't mind taking the time, or some of the offers that I didn't encounter, I didn't feel as comfortable for various reasons. So, you may get a recommendation for a financial planner, for example, but you still got to make that decision based on your comfort comfort level, and that's an individual choice, you know, because there's okay. as far as investing in, excuse me, as a service or a product or in your financial wealth, there's a lot of people that offer the same thing, right? You can get a, a burger right. on every corner by somebody different. It's based on what kind of burger you mm-hmm. want, right, or what kind of experience you want. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> the same thing yep. with service or product <laughs> providers, right? Correct. See who you feel uh-huh. most comfortable, see who moves the label, who you feel can give you the result you're looking for, and then that's who you choose to invest in. Wow, absolutely, absolutely. I'm 100% on board with you on that. So with the last question, we would love for you to be able to share. Uh, This is an opportunity for you, for you to be able to share with the listeners where they can be able to find your products and services, how they can be able to connect with you on any social media platforms that you would like to um, leave with the audience and where they can be able to find your book and purchases. And if you have any uh support groups, you can be able to share that, and you can also be able to share um, as to um, you have any master classes that are coming up. We try to allow the 
listeners to be able to connect with our guests after the show. So you can share that at this time. Awesome. Okay, so you can um, check out my website at www.nefasteriafonde.com. You can check me out on the full major platforms of social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Nefasteria Fonde. And you can come and hang out with me and my community on Facebook, Christian Taylor Welcome Powerhouses. And if you're like, you know what, this girl seems like somebody I want to get to know a little bit better, and I would love to know more about how I can work with her personally, then you can go to bit.ly forward slash look with Neff and schedule a complimentary discovery session. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's awesome. That is so awesome. We thank you so much, Nefertiria, for taking the opportunity out with us as today, as, as all of our guests do, and we appreciate you being a guest on the show, sharing with us about sales and about your brand and about your new book. So, listeners, get stay tuned for our next segment that's coming up at 10 o'clock on Women Who Rock Investigates. And to everyone, we will see you then at 10 o'clock. Thank you so much once again for being our guest on today. It was my pleasure. Thank you.